proxy pose is a new feature right now that actually will reduce your mesh's size so it's a usable workable file for you to do any major changes whether it be posing or whether it be just inflating deflating or or just manipulating your file and then once you're done with proxy pose it's essentially coming back and giving you back all the details and even subdivisions if you have it it's not a projection it's literally storing that information and just reducing the mesh count so you can then manipulate the file and then get all that information back. So here, for example, we have my Velociraptor and he has subdivisions on it. Now, this is ideal in a lot of workflows, but what if my subdivision level one is still pretty dense and I want it lower to then, but I still want to keep all those details. So, and I don't want to go through zebra meshing it again. So this would be one scenario in which you can utilize that. So here under geometry and proxy pose, which is a new menu above dynamic subdiv, is this new proxy pose feature. And we have a couple items. So we have the ability to freeze borders. We have the ability to polish. So if you're working with hard surface specifically, this might be something that you would want to kick up a little bit. Then you have the actual reduction amount. And then we also have keep details. Now keep details is a really good addition slider because when you have things like this guy right here and you're starting to have points in your scene, when you open up proxy post, some of those points might get lost. So the keep detail slider will allow you to keep those higher details and the smaller points intact a little bit more so that you know you're moving the mesh around correctly. So here, let's just go ahead and showcase that it actually works with subdivision. So I have subdivision level four, and he's about 2.6 million polys. So what I would want to do with this feature is I would actually want to come on over to the reduction slider. I'm going to turn on the wireframe, and I'm just going to start dragging this reduction slider. And you can see now that it's actually reducing that mesh down. It's almost, it's almost basically tessellating it on the fly for you. Now, what's really cool is at the top left-hand side, there is a percentage of how much the cage is built out of. So out of 2.6 million polys, we are using 1.2% of that mesh in order to manipulate our scene. So now our active points is about 16, almost 17,000 active points. So I'm going to back this up though, and I'm going to actually do the keep details because this guy has some details on him, but you don't need to go too high. You can actually do a little bit, say like start with like 10, maybe 15%. And then again, now I'm going to come through and I'm going to do a reduction. And I like to live around 1% to 2%. So the slider is very low, but you can see how much this is actually dropped. And now I'm going to go through and just really fast, I'm going to take the mass lasso and I'm going to just do a really quick scene manipulation with this mesh, where actually I'm going to do one of my cool little tricks with the transpose master is drag out into uh, the cover my selection and then press and hold the alt button and actually move with that white circle in the middle. I'm actually going to kind of bend this in this shape. And then I'm going to hit R and rotate this around. So I get a nice quick little selection and maybe two. We'll hit R again, not T, and we'll drag this down. And then let's actually push it just a little bit more. Again, just kind of holding that spot there. You can even to um, come through and just use like any brushes that you would like, say maybe move infinite which is an awesome brush. If you're not using it, it's going to grab what I'm picking on the surface and then infinitely in depth what that is. So I could take a nice big brush and then kind of move this down a bit. So once I get the pose that I like, and again, I'm just going to do another quick change. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate this, alt this gizmo tap, and then I'm going to rotate this head just a little bit just so you can see. Now that I have this change, I want to send this back. And the perk with this is that you can see how low resolution this mesh is. And then as soon as I say proxy pose, it's going to move that mesh and then it's going to go ahead and bring back all those details. And you can see here, that was pretty clean. Now, this was with one mesh with multiple sub tools. So you can see here that I didn't move the eye. So of course I could actually, if we go back in time here a little bit and move this here, I can in this grab multiple items so I can open up the gizmo and turn on the transpose all selected subtools, AKA pizza box. And I can grab multiple items and then I can actually come through and then move this around so that my eyes actually move the way I want. And then again, just hitting that proxy pose, going up to geometry, proxy pose, turn it back on. 
is going to go ahead and then get all those details back and put the cage where it was, including the subdivisions. So this is a really awesome tool in order to make big changes quickly. And for all you 3D printing enthusiasts out there, if I go to a merge sub tool that was either dynameshed or has no uh, subdivisions whatsoever, it's the exact same process. Now, what's also really neat is that notice that when I was working with the other one, it remembered my reduction amount slider. So when you are working through this and you're working with that sub tool, if you find something that you like, so say something like right about here, which is that 1%, when I turn proxy pose off, it's actually going to remember my settings. And that's important because maybe you make a change and then you actually want to go ahead and then make the exact same change again. And you already found your settings. It's already there for you. So this works with subdivisions and this also works without subdivisions. So if you have big files, again, you can make those changes. Now, let's say I work with Transpose Master. So same exact thing. I have this mood file. If you want to work with Transpose Master, so if we come back to maybe this guy right here, and I'm going to put him back in time. We're going to go back to the beginning because I have multiple subtools. Perfect. And let's just say this one didn't have subdivisions, but all the other ones do. So everything has low subdivisions, but this is the only one that didn't because I didn't want to do that at the time. What I can do now is I can turn on my proxy pose on this one mesh, get what I want, come on up to the Z plugin, go up to transpose master, and now I can send this in. I can even turn on the layer system and work with a layer system with transpose. So if I wanted to make big changes to everything, but I wanted to attach those to a layer, I could turn on layer and I can go to transpose mesh. And now it's going to send this on over and any change I make to my subtools, it's going to propagate a layer for me. So again, making those same changes, just because, you know, we keep things simple. I'm going to come through here. I'm actually going to make just something a little bit slightly different for funsies. So let's come over here. I'm going to bend this a little bit, say something like that. Perfect. And then maybe let's just come through, bring this down. Awesome. You can even, with the gizmo, adjust the focal length. And now you can get some really interesting movements because it's not a sharp movement. It's now giving me a little bit of a soft transition and bend to it. So I could do something like that. Come through here, again, selecting this area, asking it out, making my transpose fun and unique. So I'm gonna come through, rotate this down, just so you guys would get it. And then let's rotate the head this way down. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with our pose. And now let's actually, you know what? I'm sorry, just for fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna rotate them this way. Perfect. Now we want to send them back. So I'm going to go to Z plugin and I'm going to go ahead and say T pose send back to there. And it's going to go ahead and send that back, but we still have proxy pose active. So now from here, I can go ahead and say proxy pose. And it's going to go ahead and bring back all those details for me. There it is. And so everything changed and happened. And you can see here too, it's it's really, really nice and subtle with the details. It's preserving a lot of those details that it's just really helping me. So I don't have to spend too much time fixing my model up the way it is. So that is another way that you can utilize proxy post. So really look at it as a way to manipulate your mesh quick, fast, and in a hurry without having to always go through and optimize the mesh, especially if you work in, let's say something like asymmetry, where, you know, if this was a dinosaur statue and I don't work from a T pose and I'm not worried about, you know, any type of, uh, you know, subdivisions or if my mesh looks really pretty or not. I can utilize this feature to help make those changes quickly by knocking it down to a lower percentage. So those are those are the ways that you could utilize it. I've also utilized it with Z spheres. So if I reload this real fast, so let's see, here's my here's actually my pose one. And I actually have a pre-built skeleton made from Z spheres. So I can now come through here with my merge one, and I'm gonna duplicate this. Anytime I work with, with posing, I always keep a backup mesh for T posing. So just to, so I have something to fall back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide that one, and now I have this main merged one item. So now I can go through, and again, without having to go through the T pose mesh, which you absolutely could, you can click Z sphere rig, and then go into T pose mesh and build your own rig. But if I wanted to stay within this scene, because I'm only working with a merged item at this point, 
or I have other subdivision or other models that I don't mind that are low that have subdivisions. Again, I can just come through, take my main mesh, again, turning on proxy pose. So now I have this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my skeleton. Now I wanna make sure that when I go to adaptive skin that the density is at one and that the DynaMesh resolution is at zero because this is gonna help preserve my mesh of, of uh, my dinosaur. And then I'm gonna come through on rigging, select mesh. Now I'm gonna find that proxy pose mesh. Now this part's important. And this was one of the questions that did come up, which is I've made multiple iterations of my mesh, but only some of the items move over and other items don't. The thing to remember is that when we're working with proxy pose, we come back in ZBrush, when you're utilizing or you're wanting to, to when you're utilizing this mesh, you want to keep the vertice count the exact same. So if I make a proxy mesh utilizing, you know, 10%, and then I make another one utilizing 5%, those are two different mesh counts. So it's not going to transfer the information correctly from one to the other. So you want to make sure that when you use your proxy pose, again, I come through here and I make a duplicate, and then this is the one that stays proxy pose. So now I can make multiple versions off of that one count so that I know the vertice count's always the same. So when I say go to rigging and now bind my mesh, now I'm gonna come through here. I'm gonna take the move brush. I'm gonna select the actual uh, link between the two. So it's gonna give me a nice little animation uh, movement. And we can even go ahead and turn off uh, symmetry so that we can get some asymmetry movement. So I can move this over. Again, I'm clicking the chain. If I click the Z sphere itself, it's actually going to stretch or shrink the mesh that's attached. And we don't want to do that. We want to preserve it as much as possible. So you want to click the chain itself. And then again, I'm going to come through. I have this dinosaur guy. I'm going to move this up. And we're going to go ahead and just make a couple little, little changes right there. Perfect. Now he's like a happy little walking dinosaur. And I'm going to move this. You can even use rotate. Rotate his body just a bit. Perfect. Now that I have what I want, I'm going to hit A on the keyboard, which is going to show me what that mesh looks like. From here, I'm going to go to adaptive skin. I'm going to say make adaptive skin, which now makes a permanent version of this low mesh and another sub tool. So here it says skin raptor skeleton. That's one. I now can either save this out or I can copy it and now put it into my merged file and go ahead and say paste. And there it is. Now this is, I'm going to name this pose one. Now we're actually going to do this one more time. So I'm going to hide this and now I'm going to quickly do this one more time. So I'm going to go back to the raptor skeleton, hit A again. If I want to reset this pose, just come back to rigging and unbind it. Resets your whole pose. Rebind. And now we're going to make another one. So now I'm going to actually have him maybe standing up a little bit. So I'm going to move his body up. Maybe he'll be looking upwards. Say something like this. There we go. And maybe this time we have a leg that's like starting to step backwards. And maybe we'll have one that's starting to move forward just a little bit. Say something like this. Now I have a secondary pose. He's now standing up. Again, you're going to press A. And then from here, adaptive skin, make adaptive skin. This gives me a secondary one. But we've been working off of the same type of mesh. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Go back to my merged file. So here it is. I'm going to paste this in and now I'm going to call this pose two. Perfect. Now I'm going to go back to my original duplicate where the one I did the proxy pose. And now I'm going to go to geometry and hit overwrite pose. And you'll see here, I now have two different posing options. I have pose one and pose two. And I can switch between the two while I'm in proxy pose to find out which one I really like. So you show your art director, your client, your boss, your friends, like, hey, look, we could go like this or we can go like this. And they're like, yeah, I really like the first one. So you go back to the first one and then you say proxy pose and then it brings it all back. So there's a lot of different ways you can go through all of this so that you can actually quickly and effectively pose your models and keep all those details really effectively. So hopefully that clears up how to use proxy pose and gives you some ideas on how you can actually go about using this new feature.